Yoey Lockie Reid here, mate. Um, just wondering, one, it's only a few days away now from when you travel to the hubs. Uh, what are your thoughts on the hubs and looking forward to it? Oh, looking forward to more playing football uh, and getting involved in a hub, but um, obviously it's come to that point that um, we obviously have to go up there and, and spend some time up there, but I'm more excited to just play football, um, run around in pairs and um, doing non contact for you know a few months is doing me a little bit stir crazy, so um, I'm looking forward to playing football. What you've done so far contact wise, do you think you've done enough to prepare yourself for a full scale footy match? Uh, good question. Um, yeah, it would be interesting to see how everything unfolds. Um, ideally, you know, pre-seasons we have, you know, probably three or four months um, of proper pre-season under the belt and then maybe one or two with full contact. So we've probably only had three weeks. So it would be interesting, interesting to see how um, that might have an impact. Um, I think we, I think a couple of weeks ago, we're only going to get one week of contact and then play games, but we were fortunate enough that um, some regulations were eased a little bit and we were able to get three weeks uh, under the belt. So that, that definitely helps, um, gives you a little bit more confidence, but I guess it's going into the unknown um, as well. We haven't done this before, so uh, yeah, I can't really say until you get to that point and um, you pull up after your first couple of games. I say this with tongue and firmly planted in my cheek. If you uh, see a docker, will you socialise with them inside the Royal Pines? <laughs> uh, some players might. I probably won't. Uh, um, yeah, it, it all depends. Uh, it all depends on time schedules and when we get there. I'm, I'm hearing it's a pretty big sort of place, so um, you might bump into them, um, you know, here and there, but... You know, I'm, I'm not assuming that we'd be sitting down, you know, watching TV shows and doing stuff like that together. Um, but yeah, we'll have to wait and see. After after a couple of weeks, you might end up. They might end up being your best mates. <laughs> uh, just last one from me. Uh, what item is a must for you, taking into the hub and, and having four weeks? Have you got one item that you're not going to do without? Uh, probably probably the laptop. Yeah. I'll be taking my laptop, there'll be plenty of Netflix going on there. Um, that'll get me through. So I would have, a couple of years ago, I would have probably taken the golf clubs up, but I haven't, haven't been playing too much. And um, ever since I broke my hand, I haven't really been able to hold the club the same. So um, yeah, it's, uh, it's probably my laptop probably getting me through with Netflix. Elliot, you've um, had a bit of time to get used to playing with Tim Kelly now in the midfield group and training together. Um, does his addition sort of force you to continue playing more of that defensive role or do you think that the fact that he would uh, potentially attract some, uh, some attention from the opposition as well, does that sort of free you up? How, does, how, does, how do you sort of see that balance? Uh, look, it, it, it worked pretty well round one. Um, so, yeah, we'll have to wait and see whether or not um, how much of an impact it has against, I guess, the whole team and the whole midfield group. So uh, I don't think in terms of anything my role will change um, so, and I don't think many other players' um, roles will change uh, inside either. So, um, you know, he's a valuable addition to the team and played a really good game. And, um, you know, I'm hoping for, for more to come. So, um, yeah, it, it's, it's probably one of those things that we'll have to wait and see, um, see what teams throw at us and see how we sort of evolve as well. Um, as I said, we've only played one game and it was a, it was a good game, but, um, and, and we obviously come away the win, but uh, you never know, things change. Um, Clubs, different teams, they throw different things at you, um, and you know you evolve as well over the over the course of the year. So, yeah, we'll have to wait and see how everything sort of um, evolves and, and unravels, really. And just the, the length, the duration of the hub is obviously still up in the air, um, but yeah, there is the potential for it to go longer than uh, you know than a month or five weeks. Um, I guess, yeah. How do you how do you feel about that sort of the potential for it to go longer than that? And if the sort of alternative was, um, you know, the, the border stays up or whatever, but, you know, a couple of Victorian clubs can come into WA and have the ability to train and play games and then rotate out with, with others, uh, is that, does that sort of seem like a good solution to you, potentially? Uh, yeah. I, I, hard to say as well because the AFL has only given us a couple, you know, the fixture for a couple of games. So, um, you know, we might get up there and they might throw something throw something at us, but I'm pretty sure the clubs and the players are pretty strong on a maximum of four weeks up there, um, which I think is, you know, I guess adequate time 
um, considering you know a lot, a lot of players are moving families over there, a lot of players are moving you know a lot of stuff over there and, and doing you know a big sacrifice as well. Um, so look, there's a lot of things that go involved behind the scenes, um, you know, I guess state-wise in terms of you know. Um, protocols and stuff like that as well that need to, I guess, be ticked off. But um, ideally, we'd like to be up there for, for four weeks max. Um, but, you know, you just never know, to be honest. So, but we'll have to wait and see. Um, it's, we're going up into the unknown, really, as well. Just um, how, how would you compare your physical condition now with, say, after a normal pre-season and summer coming into round one? Um, yeah, I... I I feel, in terms of physically, I feel great. Um, body feels fine, um, no sort of issues. So uh, you sort of, in terms of how you feel going into a pre-season, going into, you know, round one, um, kind of feels like round one, really, um, except we probably don't have that contact as much under the belt. But uh, physically, I feel, I feel fine, I um, feel great. So... Um, I don't sort of have any sort of queries on that. The only thing that I might query is probably the contact side of things, but you won't know until you get up there and you play games of football. You won't need to do as much work at the club next summer. Yeah, well, good you luck telling... to your own devices. Yeah, well, good luck telling Niz that one. Um, <laughs> we'll see if that gets ticked off and, and a couple of the coaches, I don't think, will be too happy with that one. Just a, another question on uh, tackling. I think tackling numbers were down across the board in round one, and, and some players thought that because without a crowd there... It just sort of made it a less contested game and a bit less intense. Tackling's obviously a big part of your game. Um, what, what do you think about that? Does not having any crowd and atmosphere have any effect on the style of footy that gets played? Oh, not having a crowd definitely has an effect on, I guess, how different players react to different things. Um, you know, the adrenaline's obviously a lot higher, but I still feel that, you know, games were probably... Um, and after round one, I think we'll probably, in terms of averages... Players were a lot down in terms of their total distance, total sprint, everything like that. So shorter quarters as well probably have an effect on that. Um, but, yeah, it's, it's hard to say. It could just be an anomaly. It's obviously one round um, and might just be one of those things that you know, happens. But um, as, as I've said before, it's hard to say unless you get a couple games under the belt and then tackle numbers seem down or, I guess, um, contests and stoppages are a bit lower than... You know, it might sort of stick out that you know the game's starting to evolve a little bit more, possibly. But um, yeah, you won't know until you cross that bridge. What's your read on the ruck situation? Obviously, playing two specialist rucks has been big for you guys for the last few years. Does the shorter quarters change that at all? Or would you consider only needing maybe one specialist ruckman now? Yeah, well, that's that's <laughs> that's out of my hands. Um, that goes down to the match committee and, and Simo and, and all them. So. Yeah, it's much of a muchness. I know round one we sort of had Nick and, and then um, Tom Hickey, he was sort of floating in, but he played, you know, pretty low numbers. So I guess there's probably um, those shorter quarters is probably a little bit of a, you know, advantage possibly here or there. And I, I think a lot of clubs will try and figure that out, whether that be, you know, two specialists or one ruckman or and you have a sort of pinch hit as well. So I'm not too sure yet. We'll have to wait and see. Um, yeah, it's hard to say. You're not putting your hand up to pinch hit? Nah, nah. I tried it. I tried it. I reckon a game in 2017 or 16 or whatever, and I had to go up against Big Boy McAvoy, and that wasn't fun. So, no, nah, not for me. <laughs> Elliot Asher, six PR. Just wondering, have you had much discussion about what the schedule is going to look like when once you get to the Royal Pines? I can imagine being in a very intense environment. There has to be a bit of a plan as to the level of commitment that you sort of have to show, but also sort of getting away from football as best as possible. Have you had that early discussion? Oh, yeah, we've had plenty of discussions on uh, how players are going to get avenues and their release from football. Uh, so, yeah, there's, there's plenty of things that we're trying to get um, behind the scenes that players can do or, um, I guess, get their mind off football. Uh, they're still, uh, with restrictions and protocols in place, it's quite difficult to do certain things. So I'm thinking and we're hoping that, I guess, after the first week when we're up there, um, those restrictions sort of lift a little bit and we're able to do more. Um, so, but in terms of uh, schedules and everything like that, it'd sort of be mainly the same sort of schedule, you know, in season mode from previous years and I guess what we're going through now. So um, the time commitment is still there, but, um, I guess finding that avenue outside of football, especially up there, um, and you're in that resort, 
is pretty um, pretty key that you know players find certain different um, things to take their mind off football because um, you know if you can't do much up there and you're sort of locked in that hub then um, I'm sure there'll be a lot of players doing their heads in. And just the last one from me, have you turned your attention to the Suns yet or is that something that you're looking to do once you get based on the, the Gold Coast? Yeah, we've had we've had a little bit of talks um, with the coaches, but not too much. So it, it'll be more in terms of um, just your standard week to week thing. So the minute that we probably kick in on Monday, it'll go to full Gold Coast mode. This is what they do. This is you know how they play. So you know um, we'll have that full review on them. Um, so nothing sort of changes too much um, in terms of that. They haven't tried to flood us too much just yet. Um, with information, and you know, it'll probably come early next week that we get all that. Uh, Elliot, Mitch Cleary from AFL.com.au. Um, you take us through some of those things that you're trying to, to get approved. Obviously, the golf is big for some of the boys, but surfing, um, is it, there are other things that, you, that have been mentioned um, specifically that you're trying to get? Yeah, uh, golf, surfing, um, players trying to get cars um, so they can sort of go out go for walks, just get out of the hub, really. So um, they're trying all different things. Uh, look, there's plenty. I could bore you with the list that goes on for forever. We've asked for basically everything under the sun. So um, I'm, I think Scully's asked for a full, proper executive business lounge for his side businesses. So um, there's a variety of different things. There's some different, um, I guess, requests that are out there. But, yeah, they're, they're, the main ones will probably be um, golf and surfing for a lot of... Um, a lot of the players, but there's a lot of a lot of small things as well that they're trying to get ticked off. Yeah, we all. Uh, could I just ask one? Just with your game style, uh, a little bit. I think Ross Lyon might have even mentioned it last night that the precision footy and the possession footy that you play might take you some time to get going after this little break. Do you feel that, or do you think you can fit straight back into West Coast footy? Oh, I think a lot of teams will be rusty first up, but. Um, yeah, it's it'd be. I feel that you know we're confident going in that our style of you know game, um, you know, we'll be able to pick it up straight away. Obviously, there'll be things that you probably need to tighten up and tinker here and there. Um, but you know, I have full confidence going in that you know we're going to play our way, and um, you know, I have all confident that we'll be able to execute it. Um, you know, I feel that we've got some, you know, a fair bit of experience in the in the team that um, you know we, we should be able to fulfil that. Just a quick one, Cam McCarthy had a bit of a collapse today at training. Uh, I know you wouldn't know anything about it, but when you hear news like that, something like that happening at training, what's your immediate thoughts? Uh, what type of collapse was it? Yeah, so he collapsed and has been taken to hospital. Just, you know, we, we see it a little bit uh, around with footballers doing that. We don't know how serious it is, but when that happens to an opponent or a teammate, mm. what do you make of it? Oh, it's pretty scary, yeah, especially if you get raced off to hospital. Um, you saw a couple of years ago, I think it was um, Dylan Robin, I think he collapsed, you know, during a game. So, um, you know, you obviously care for all players and all players, you know, health and well-being. Um, so, you know, I'm hoping that everything's all good and it was just sort of, um, you know, a, a once-off incident um, and, and there's nothing, you know, too deep into that. So... Can't really comment on it. I don't really know too many um, details about it, but yeah, obviously you care for for his um, his health and well-being.